Hello everybody and welcome back to Herbie's Garage. Today we're working on the Venom Ghost Chopper 250. And I got the need for speed. <laughs> so we're going to be switching the rear sprockets. I got me a new one. I'll show you which one it is. It's a JT sprocket. JTR 269.36. The 36 is 36 tooth. And the stock sprocket on this bike is a 45, and we're going down to 36. So that's nine teeth. That's probably equivalent to about two or three in the front, at least two in the front. I think it's like one tooth at the front equals like four to the back, something like that. So anyway, we're going to be doing that, and we're going to get started on it right away. So come along, and let's see how this goes. First thing we have to do is take these two screws out for the chain guard and their Phillips head. And we'll just slide that out. Well, There we go. Looks like it's got a, a pin in the front that has to lift up. I didn't know that was in there, but it has to lift up out of the hole. The next thing we're going to take off is this cover. I don't know if we really need to, but I'm going to for ease of installation. Now the top one, we'll just take out the impact. That always makes it easier with an impact. Okay, so let's count how many teeth are on this sprocket. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. This has a seventeen tooth sprocket, and as you could see, there is no room for a larger sprocket. That's why we're putting a smaller one in the back. Okay, the next step, we got to find the master link. And it's right there. And then we'll pop the master link off with a pair of long nose pliers, needle nose. There it is right there. We'll set it aside. We're not going to be reusing this because it, oh yeah, we are, because we're going to reuse this chain. You take this plate off next, and you can pop out the master link. And just let this rest out of our way, like that. I do have a new chain coming. I don't have one right now. I ordered an RK chain. And I'll change that. I may do a video on that later. Okay, now let's take the wheel out. It should impact. You can't get on the other side over here with the impact because the muffler's in the way unless you take the muffler and exhaust all off. So. We'll take the nut off and then slide the axle out a little bit. And then on this side, it has a plate and a nut. And we'll set that aside. And I don't know if you can see it or not. Let me lower it down. And I put a couple of boards under here, and it's just enough to where it'll clear. So when I take that bolt out, it'll drop down and hit this and not go down so far. I won't have to fight it so much. All right, now we'll take the bolt, the axle, all the way out. Like that. There's the axle, and it's got another plate on this side. And then we'll just work it out. Like that. It makes it easy whenever you got it on the boards, because you could just roll it out of the opening in there. 
and this brake stay will come out. It just has a pin right here. Let's see if you can see it. There's a pin right here that that brake stay slides on. Okay, so on the sprocket side, there's a spacer over here. We're going to take that out. We get the spacer out. Now we have to take this snap ring off. Let's get you a good pair of snap ring pliers and you got to kind of work it. It's not the easiest thing to do. Let me get it where I can get on here. Okay, now let's take these snap ring off Just like that. Then pull it off. It's a little bit of a battle sometimes to get it because it wants, it wants to stick inside the groove. But we're going to put it back in the way we took it out, just like this. All right, next we got to take off our bolts, nuts. And then our sprocket just lifts off. See how these studs fit. They're a little bit loose in there. I may want to get some Honda studs and put in there because those Honda studs seem like they fit a little tighter. Uh, here's the new sprocket. Let's open it up. You got a JT sprocket sticker. Here's the old and here's the new. Quite a bit of difference. But the bolt holes align up. That's the main thing. Okay, as you can see, this has got recessed areas in here for these bolts to sit like this. See how that sits in that groove? like that so when we put this sprocket in this has got a groove all the way around it so we're going to be putting them in like this to where it'll catch inside of there okay since these bolts have to fit down inside this groove what we're going to do is we're going to put the nuts on it before we install the sprocket So let's get a little bit of blue thread locker on it. So we don't want those nuts coming off. And then we'll put our nut on it. Tighten it down. That way it'll hold it in that groove. And we're going to take another one. And we're going to do the same thing. Okay. Two more. Okay, see now you can see that every one of those is seated down inside of that groove. If you were to put those in there and then just slide your sprocket down over the top of it, you have no way of knowing whether you, those are turned in the right direction or not. So put those in first and then you can line this up. 
and drop it down. Now we can finish torquing these down. Okay. Make sure that's all the way down and make sure there's nothing on this snap ring that might prevent it from seating. And then take your snap ring pliers. Now this should be easier going on than what it was coming off. Sometimes getting these things off are a booger, but it wasn't too bad. Okay, I've got my snap ring on. I got it closed all the way. It was a little bit of a battle to get it in there. I had to do a little bit of filing on it because I must have nicked it up and it just didn't want to go in good. You got to make sure these are all tight and sucked down on there good. And then your, your, uh, your snap ring has to fit in there perfectly. I mean, once it's in there, it's snug and tight and it's not going anywhere. Once you get it all lined up, into the brake stay, and everything then you go try to line it up on the uh, adjuster on the other side once you get it lined up it'll fall in There we go. Whew. Okay, once you get that on, then you can put your other adjuster and your nut on the other side. I mean, it's not your adjuster. Once you get all that in, then you can put your plate and your nut on the other side. Once you run your nut down, then you can hammer your wheel forward. Okay, once you get the wheel in there, and you can put your chain back on. We'll see how much we have to take out of the chain. It's like one, two, three, four links. Okay, so this chain has 128 links, and we're gonna take out four. So one, two, three, four. So we need to take this off right here. You can do that with a grinder, 
but this little tool is just so handy. It's easy to grab for me and everything. So that's what I'm doing it with. And you take your tool. And we'll just take the small adjustment and move it where it's just barely sticking through. And we'll take the chain. And we'll line it up with that hole in the bottom. Then we'll take the big adjustment and run it down. And you want to make sure that that's hitting on the center of that pin. Because if it's not, you're going to have a heck of a time getting this thing pushed out. And then once you get it where you want it, you take your big adjustment and start running it down and take your small one, start running it in. Make sure it's hitting on the pin. And you'll feel it start to go, which I just did. You could do this with an impact if you want, but if you get it off, you really messed your tool up. It's hard to tell whenever you're getting it off, off a track with an impact. You're better off just using a wrench. That way you can feel resistance in it. There's the pin. Okay, now see when you're done, you want to have two ends like this. You don't want an end like this on your chain because it won't match up. And as you can see, I've taken one, two, three, four links out. You take, you count the rollers for the links. So it's got, I took four links out of it. Had 128, so now we got 124. So let's go put it in. Okay. So we want the chain coming across the top here. Okay, and then we'll go around the front sprocket. Of course, you got to have it neutral so it'll roll easily. And then you got to route the chain the same route it was that it came out from. Of course. Okay, once you're happy with the way your chain looks, roll it around to where these two pieces meet. Put your master link in it. Like that. Put your plate on it. Like that. Put the closed in going that direction. Take your pliers and snap it on like that. Okay. So now we got to take the slack out of it.
see where we're at on the adjustment. All right. Let's see the other side. You want them even. They look pretty close. They look pretty close, actually. You want to check your wheel and see what it looks like inside, inside there. You want the same distance from the swing arm to the tire on this side as the swing arm to the tire is on that side. All right, well, let's tighten it up. I think we're good on the adjustment. I'll just barely tighten this and then we'll torque it. Feels like the play in that is just about right. We'll set my favorite torque wrench, which is a Tecton, to 55 foot pounds. Uh, there it's 55. Okay, I'm going to back it up with the wrench on the other side. There we go. Perfect. Rolls nice and free. Chains tension's perfect. Let's just put a little bit more of the mold tool. <clears throat> this puts a little bit of mold tool chain paste on it. Squeeze a little bit through. I think that's enough. It'll work its way in there. All right, that'll be good. I think next we'll go ahead and put our chain guard on. Let's 
snap it in back there and line those up and put our screws in. Okay, we'll put our cover back on, the front sprocket. Just lightly start this one. So it'll kind of hold it in place. That's a little bit too much. And then we gotta get the tough one on the bottom. Well, that was quite the project. We got the rear sprocket changed. Here's the old one, 45 tooth, and we have a 36 tooth installed. We have the old chain on it, but I'm going to put a new one on it. I know how many links that the new one's going to need, 124. It had 128, and I took four off. So I know when I order a new chain, I need a 120, 124 link chain. I can always cut it. It's no big deal to cut it. I may just get a 130 and then cut some links off of it. A lot of times it's cheaper to do it that way. <laughs> I guess if it's a common length chain, then they, they you know, they want to charge you more for it. So, And we have it lubricated. So we have the maximum gearing for high, higher speed that we can get. 17 is the highest we could go on the front, 36 is the lowest we could go on the back, which makes the gearing taller, makes it higher, so you, so you drop RPMs at highway speed, and that's what we're looking for. And I think this bike will maintain 60, 65 pretty good. Um, it's been running really well. I haven't got a lot of miles on it yet. I was wanting to get this sprocket changed. And now that I got that done, and I got a lot of other things done, as you can see, I'm getting closer to having it finished for me, I like to make a bike my own, you know. And I like to bring you guys along in case there are some tips or something that uh, might be helpful. So anyway, that's all I got for you today. I appreciate you watching. I'm sorry that it was so long, but I had a lot to cover. And I uh, hope you got something out of it. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Like the video. And I'll see you on the next one.